This video is the second in a set of two reviewing the properties of waves. This video is going to look specifically at some of the features that we'll be examining in transverse waves, including amplitude, wavelength, crest, trough, frequency, and period. When we look at a transverse wave, one of the things that we see is that there's a high point and a low point in a wave. The high point of a wave is called the crest. That is the top of the wave. And if you've ever seen a wave at the ocean, there is a low point that's called the trough. So if you could imagine being on board a ship in the middle of a storm, if you're on top of the wave, you can look down and see very deep like a valley into the trough. Or if you're in a trough of a wave in a storm and you look forward, you would see a gigantic wall of water in front of you. So that is the difference between a trough and a crest. Now, there is a rest position that's been drawn on this picture from the textbook showing us what would be the condition if there were no if there was no energy in the wave. That is the rest position. Now, another important feature to think about is how high a wave is. And we measure how high a transverse wave is through its amplitude. That is the distance from the rest position up to the crest or from the rest position down to the trough. Now, the more energy a wave has, the higher its amplitude is going to be. For example, if you think of a tsunami, which is a wave created by an earthquake, the more energy that the tsunami has, the higher the wave will be. And the higher the wave is, its amplitude will be more destructive. Another feature of a wave that we should consider it is a wave's frequency. And a frequency is the number of wavelengths, so that's a crest and a trough, that are going to pass between a fixed point every second. So if we examine the picture here, the top of the wave is going to be our crest, and the bottom here is a trough. So as you can think, as the wave is moving through this, it's going to go and creates one trough, one crest, and it's going to, once it hits its rest position again, going to create another trough. So that is one whole wave length, one trough and one crest. Now the fixed point that we're thinking about uh, is its period. We want to know what is the amount of time it takes for one of these wavelengths to pass a fixed point. And call that the period. Now, the picture here shows one wavelength traveled in one second. So if we have that happen, we get a frequency of one wave per second. And in frequency, we would call that one hertz, hz is its unit. And hertz is named for the person who uh, came up with this concept. So if we were to examine a wavelength, you can look at a wavelength from trough to trough, crest to crest, or rest position to rest position. And that would be one whole wavelength. How many of those wavelengths pass every second is going to be our frequency. Using a wave simulator, such as the one on the FET website, we can change amplitude and frequency. So if we wanted to increase the number of waves happening per second, we increased the frequency. And when we increase the frequency, we should see that the wavelengths should decrease. If we 
decrease the frequency, wavelengths should get longer, meaning that there is fewer waves per second. Now, independent of frequency and wavelength, we can change amplitude. So by increasing the amplitude, it would be the size of the wave. And if you can change both of them, you can totally change the shape of our waves. In review, when we look at the properties of a wave, we're looking at amplitude, wavelength, and frequency. To explore more properties of waves, be sure to do the next activity and work with the FET lab in the course shell.